Right, Code Nines, as I said in the previous PowerPoint presentation, I will also be explaining the effect of credit sales on the accounting equation on the whiteboard so that you can physically see how it is done and then hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. All right, the example that we used was the following transaction. Sold goods on credit to Caleb Borney for 1,200 Rand and the cost price was... 800 rand. So how do we analyze it um, on the accounting equation? First of all, please remember I said this is not the only format. You can also be asked, um, for example, in which journal or subsidiary book this transaction is recorded, as well as perhaps account to be debited and account to be credited. I will do that a little bit later on. This is the format that I like to use in my classroom, but there are other ways um, to ask it as well. All right, so let's start with the source document. And before we get going, I like to make use of different colors when I explain the accounting equation. So if you've got them on hand, it's nice to also use it when you complete your exercises and just makes it a little bit more easy to remember. Okay, so if we start with the source document, and um, what is our source document in a credit sales transaction? Remember, we sold on account or on credit to the debtor. So whenever we sell on credit, our source document or the document that we issue is a um, credit invoice. Now, remember the client, or in this case, the data, will always get the original invoice. So our source document is then the duplicate invoice. Right. And then I said that um, with any sales transaction, cash or credit, we work with an A part. And you can sort of write that in before you start so that you won't forget it. I use green for the A part and red for the B part. Green good and uh, red the bad or the smaller amount. So that's how you can also remember it. Okay. So with the two parts, we work with a sales amount and a cost of sales amount. So in the A part, the nice big amount, the sales amount, you know that we've sold to the client. So I always like to start with the sales one. It's the easiest one of easier one of the two accounts to, to get going with from, from my point of view. All right. So then you ask yourself, sales is what type of account? It's an income. What do all income accounts do? They affect the owner's equity. Right, so I move to my owner's equity element of the accounting equation. What does an income always do to the owner's equity? It increases the owner's equity. So I will go to owner's equity. Under the effect, I will write 1,200. And what is my reason? It is sales is an income. Good. Then we ask ourselves, did we sell for cash in this transaction? Did we receive money? No, we didn't, so it's not a cash sales transaction. We sold to a client and that client owes us the money. What do we call such a client who owes us money? A data. What do we call that account where we record all the transactions of all the debtors in the business? Debtors control. What type of account is debtors control? It is an asset. So then I move to my asset element. Now remember we said um, we regard the debt of the debtors as an asset to the business because we assume in good faith that they are going to pay us that debt back and then we will receive the money for that at a later stage. Therefore, we see it as, as an asset. So if a debtor hasn't bought from us before, so he owes us zero rand, now all of a sudden he bought for 1,200 rand, he now owes us 1,200 rand. It means his debt has increase. Whenever the debt of a debtor increases, it means the debtor's control account increases and therefore our asset increases. So under assets the effect we write plus 1200 and our reason is debtor's control increases. All right, so even we're not done with this transaction yet, but you can already see that my assets, the left part of the equation, is equal to my owner's equity plus liabilities. Plus 1,200 equals plus 1,200. Did anything happen to liabilities? No, you can leave it open or write a zero, 
that's that's fine right so now we move on to the b part the not so uh, nice part the the part where we work with the smaller amount the cost price amount the cost of sales amount okay so what happened in the a part we generated an income we sold to somebody in the b part we need to tell and show what did we give to that client we didn't sell air to him like nothing we gave that client some of our trading stock so we need to write that stock that we gave to the client out of the books of the business now if you can remember from the beginning of the year when we started with this whole retailer and trading stock concept we said when our business goes and buys the stock that we want to sell in the shop from our wholesalers or um, our suppliers, the price that we pay um, when we buy it from the suppliers is called the cost price. We buy our stock at the cost price. So when we sell the trading stock, we also need to write it out of our business's books at the cost price. Okay, so that is why we work with the cost of sales amount. Good. So what did we sell? We sold trading stock. Trading stock is what type of an account? An asset. Right. So then I move to my asset element. What happens if I give the client the trading stock? The stock levels on my shelves decrease. So under assets, I'm working with the cost of sales amount. I write minus 800 and my reason is trading stock decreased. Good. Right. Now, remember we said, good, we generated an income of 1,200 Rand. But is this income, this 1,200 Rand, is that my profit? No, it's not. Why not? Way back when, I had to pay for this trading stock that we are now selling to the customer. And now we need to show, as the trading stock leaves the store, we are now realizing or materializing that expense part of the sales transaction. And that is the cost of sales, the 800 Rand. So what type of an account is cost of sales? It's an expense to the business because it makes the profit less. Now, so what do all expenses do? They affect the owner's equity. So I move over to owner's equity. What does an expense do to owner's equity? Always it decreases the owner's equity. So under effect, I will write minus 800 Rand and my reason is cost of sales. You can just write cost of sales all equals an expense. Good. And now I have indicated um, the A part, the nice part, the income part, but in the B part, I've also indicated that there's an expense um, to this transaction and the fact that stock has left the store. Good. Now, if we look after this one or and the, um, after this transaction, what is the effect on the accounting equation? Can you see minus 800 equals minus 800? Did anything happen to liabilities? No, nothing. So you can write a zero. We can also talk about the net effect of this transaction. If we look at my assets, what is plus 1,200 minus 800? It gives me a net effect of plus 400. And if I go to owner's equity, what happened there? Plus 1,200 minus 800, again a net effect of 400. And this, people, is obviously the profit of this transaction. 1,200 minus the 800, that gives me the profit. Can you see at the end of this transaction, my accounting equation is still in balance. And that is what we are checking when we are analyzing transactions on the accounting equation. Good. At the beginning, I said um, um, a question can also ask you in which journal or subsidiary book this type of transaction is recorded. And obviously, we know our journal or subsidiary book is the debtors journal, the DJ. Now, I've seen in previous um, um, exam papers as well that they might ask you for this transaction, indicate the account to be debited and account to be 
credited. Obviously, there will also be an A part and a B part to that because we have the four um, accounts that we're dealing with. So if we look at the A part, if they ask you that, and people, you can quickly draw those accounts always, the small T accounts, somewhere on a piece of paper and work it out for yourself. So in the A part, you know we're working with debtors control and we're working with sales. Let's start with debtors control. Debtors control is a asset and by now you should know those rules assets what's the rule debit plus credit minus if the debtor's debt increases and my asset increases it means i have to write on the debit side so debtor's control will be debited with 1200 sales what type of an account is sales it's an income all incomes affect the owner's equity. What is my rule for owner's equity? Debit minus credit plus. What do all incomes do to the owner's equity? They increase the owner's equity. So sales will be credited. So if the question is asked, account to be debited, account to be credited, debtor's control is debited, sales is credited for the A part. If we go to the B part, our two accounts there are trading stock, I'm some, some are abbreviating, and cost of sales. Let's start with trading stock. Trading stock is an asset. What's my rule for assets? Debit plus, credit minus. Good. If I sell the stock and I give that stock to the client and he walks out the door with the stock, what's happening to my stock levels? It decreases. So I'm going to write on the credit side. What amount? The cost of sales amount. The cost price that I originally paid for it. So I'm going to credit trading stock. If I move over to cost of sales, what is cost of sales? It's an expense. What element does an expense affect? It affects the owner's equity. What's my rule for owner's equity? Debit minus credit plus. What do all expenses do to the owner's equity? They decrease the owner's equity. So I'm going to debit cost of sales with 800 rand. Now people, so that, that is then for the B port, account to be debited will be cost of sales, account to be credited will be trading stock. Now I know that many, many students battle with this one especially. Why? To them, if they look at this, they say, okay, but cost of sales is decreasing with 800 Rand. No. Remember, an expense affects the owner's equity. So the expense is not decreasing here. In fact, the expense becomes more and more and more. But remember, whenever an expense increases, it means that the profit that the owner can take home at the end of the financial year get smaller and smaller and smaller. So please remember, whenever an expense increases, it decreases the owner's equity. So cost of sales is increasing, but it decreases the owner's equity. I really hope that this explanation on the whiteboard made things a bit clearer for you and that you can now go and complete activity five and hopefully all of you will get it right first time. If not, I will be available to answer some questions as well.